Alright guys, welcome back and Happy New Year. What we're going to be looking at first this year is a topic a few people have asked me about, um, automatic tiling. So, in your game you might be using a tile set that like seems perfectly together to create your backgrounds and or your platforms or your, your top-down walls or, or any number of different things. And um, typically the way you would implement that in Game Maker is to import it as like a background and then split it into a tile set and you can place that tile set uh, in Game Maker. But then that tile set doesn't have any interaction with the player and doesn't like uh, have any code so you have to then build walls kind of on top of it. And it can be very time consuming to build your levels this way just because you have to specifically alter all the artwork by hand. Uh, but it is possible to create a system whereby you place blocks around your level and then uh, those blocks automatically decide when the game is run what tile, what piece of artwork from the, your tile set they need to be um, in order to match up with the tiles around them. This tile set is actually from my game that uh, just came out, Another Perspective, and uh, you can see it includes all the floors, walls, and like ceilings and stuff like that that are in the game. and. Um, those blocks, I didn't place any of these like bits of artwork by hand, in another perspective all of those blocks are simple objects that work out when the game is run what, uh, which one of these little images that they need to be. So I'm going to show you how to set that up. So obviously the first thing you're going to need um, in this tutorial is an actual tile set to work with. Um, the kinds of tile sets this specific tutorial works with include 47 tiles um, that um, basically cover every possible um, layout of like, if you imagine like a 9x9 nine nine grid, every possible kind of arrangement of uh, surrounding tiles uh, possible. So each one of these tiles is based on like the tiles that are around it in a 9x9 nine nine grid and whether or not it needs to connect to those tiles or whether it, the the space next to it is empty and therefore it should show an edge or a ceiling and so on and so forth. Your tiles need to be in this specific order as well so like your your U-shaped tile where the only only tile um, next to this tile is the tile above it should be this first tile um, the second tile is a tile where the only um, neighboring tile is one to the right of it and so on and so forth um, just for the code that I used, you need to be using this specific um, order of tiles. Again, just for a little bit of context, here's another look at the tiles from another perspective, and you can see where all the floors, um, walls and ceilings are, etc. Um, it doesn't actually matter what the dimensions of uh, this tile set are, you could have them all in a big long row, just make sure that order-wise, and I'm using 64 by 64 tiles here, but just make sure order-wise um, it goes in this order from from this top left tile to this bottom right tile. Um, that's the, the main thing that's important. Um, I've just split it into rows of 12 because that was just convenient for me. So the first thing you want to do in Game Maker is import that tile set into a sprite and yes I mean a single sprite. Um, so how we would do that for example with that template tile set is I'm going to go to create sprite and then instead of going to load sprite here because I don't want to load the entire image I want each one of those um, tiles to basically be an independent frame inside of one sprite so what I'm going to do instead of going to load sprite I'm going to go straight to edit sprite from sprite 1 and then go to file and create from strip now basically this is also the system you would use to um, like import a uh, any like tile set or like um, uh, sprite sheet, for example. So I'm just going to type tiles to open, and now you'll be presented with uh, this menu here. So loading a strip image. So I mean, we have a uh, this is our tile set here, and basically what we can do now is tell Game Maker to import. Um, the specific frames that we want based on the size and shape of the image. Now we know that these images are all 64 by 64 so we're going to type that into image width and image height 64 by 64. And you can see this box will stretch out to accommodate to like show us what exactly we're going to import and we know there are 47 images that we want to import and there are 12 on each row and you can see all the boxes there just flooded out and filled up this entire thing. So there's no cell offsets or anything like that, but I mean you can use those if you're using a different sprite sheet or something like that in a different game. To um, you know, uh, if your tiles are split split apart and aren't like pixel by pixel next to each other, but mine are all perfectly lined up, so I don't need to set any offsets or anything like that. Click OK and boom, there you go, fully imported 
into the sprite. And this is why it was also important to make sure you had it in that specific order, because um, it's important them in that order. So you can see image 0 was the uh, the tile that we had in the top left, image 1 is the tile we had um, second along, and so on and so forth, all the way to the bottom, bottom right of that image. Then the next thing you want to make sure of, absolutely make sure of, is make sure you've clicked center uh, on the origin. Here, make sure you have a centered origin. It's very, very important, because the system we're going to use is going to check um, uh, from here to like the different sides or whatever from that origin to see what the tiles are surrounding it. So if your origin is offset in the corner, it's going to give you a lot of strange results. Anyway, I don't presently need the, this sprite because I already have my tile set from another perspective already um, all set up in here. So now I'm just going to get in there and show you exactly what I have set up code-wise. So the first thing I have is a simple um, obj underscore wall, which is our wall object, which would obviously have whatever other code we would want to have in our wall for collisions or whatever other things you want to have go on in here. But for now, it only has the things to work out the artwork because that's what we're interested in. So all I have is a create event and a single execute a piece of code action. In this action, I have image speed equals zero. So basically, we don't want to animate that um, that tile set. That we were using before because it animated, it would just it would blast through all the tiles all the time. We wanted to just use a single, single one of those tiles as its as its artwork, and we're going to set our image index is going to be set by a script. Um, I've named it scr underscore auto underscore tile, uh, open bracket close bracket. Now, basically, all the important stuff that works out all the magic of what tile needs to be what is contained inside uh, this script. This script is actually something I modified based on a, uh, a script by a person called Nocturne from the GMC uh, Game Maker Forum. Um, it was a pretty handy little script and I only modified it to just make some things a little bit more um, effective for me. Um, so original credit all to Nocturne for coming up with this script in the first place. It's very, very awesome and I'll explain to you now how it works. Uh, so uh, how I set the script up, because um, I modified it a little bit, is um, uh, first of all I establish a bunch of variables. So um, tile is the uh, the number of the frame of um, the tile set that we're going to use. There's there's 47 tiles in our uh, in our sprite now, and so tile is what's going to return to the object the frame it needs to use. It's going to tell our object which. Uh, which frame of uh, the sprite to use. Um, IW is just the width of our sprite. W left, um, right, up, down, low, up, left, down, left, up, right, down, right. Um, these are all just placeholders that will um, basically take in the results of collision checks in all of those directions. So we use um, the width of our sprite um, to check basically from our origin like, for example, this one, w underscore left equals place underscore meeting x minus our sprite width and y. So from our origin, um, it checks our sprite width to the left to see if there is um, another wall object there. And that's what we see by object index. So it's checking for the same object as itself, um, one sprite width to the left. And then we have one sprite width to the right, uh, one uh, sprite width upwards, one sprite width downwards, um, one sprite width up and left, and so on and so forth, and it checks all eight corners. Um, this little extra bit of code here um, basically makes the game, makes the uh, the tiles, sorry, assume that there is uh, a wall of tiles around the outside of the map. This means that, I mean, you might want to get rid of this section if it doesn't appeal to you, but uh, basically it means if I put a tile in the top left corner of the map, it assumes there is also tiles like around the outside of the map so that your walls carry on into the distance, if you know what I mean. So that they don't like end there and assume that like uh, the very top of your map must also be like a floor, if if that makes sense. Uh, it means they, they seem onwards forever and it assumes the walls stretch outside of your map. Um, if you don't want that effect then you can just you can just get rid of that. Basically this these, these four lines, because that's all that does. Um, after that, uh, we basically have a huge pile of like a big nested if statement. Now, before those of you more experienced cry 
and get upset about the idea that there's a really big um, nested if statement. The reason it's kind of okay to do what would normally be a very, very messy approach to um, any kind of logic here is because we're only really running this script on the create event of every one of these tiles. We've already done all the complex um, uh, collision checking stuff here. Um, so really all we're doing now is comparing um, these like ones and zeros to each other, these uh, w left, w right, w up. And basically um, this is the part that uh, Nocturne did the, uh, the heavy lifting of working out, is creating this whole series of if statements that works out which, um, based on the uh, what tiles are next to you, um, which we've already got from this, um, what tile should be used where. So it by default it assumes like there's nothing next to us and sets us to tile 44 and then says oh, if tile up is um, like taken then set tile to 0, if it's if right is taken then set to 4 and so on and continues this logic basically eliminating all the different possibilities all by sort of a you know trial of elimination until eventually um, one of these numbers comes out of the if statement and then tile is the right number that it needs to be. Um, there are a lot of other ways of doing this, but I actually really quite like this this big nested if statement. I mean, you can create like a big lookup table and use some fancy bitwise uh, method stuff. Um, there are some very interesting articles on this topic um, about the internet, and um, I'll link a few of them in the description because there are some other cool methods of doing um, other different types of uh, tiling and stuff like that. So you might want to give those a read if you're interested in this sort of thing as well. But otherwise, so we do this big number crunch here, and then basically we return the tile. And that's this here is also why it's very important that your tiles are in that specific order. Because if they're not, then it's going to return the wrong number for the wrong tile, and so on and so forth. So at the very end here of our script, we have the word return tile. Um, if What return tile does, basically that will end the script here, and it's going to send tile back to wherever the script was called. And if you recall where our script was called in object wall, we said image index equals the result of str underscore auto tile. So basically, when this script, when we do this line of code here, it runs that whole script and then returns tile that variable into this because we've set it to equal that script. So that's all that that does. And then we can see that that's working now. If I come into here and I place some of our object wall around our room. You can see by default it's only using the, the first tile in here, so it all looks like the upside down thing at the moment. But then, hopefully, when we run our game, you can see that it's tiled everything as we had expected so it's worked out based on the tiles around it what tile needs to be what on on the create event and um, yeah it's sorted it all out so there we have it that's basically how you do an automatic tiling system or a simple one I'll include everything in this tutorial in the uh, in a download in the description, um, except for my artwork because that comes from my game, sorry. <laughs> but I will include um, the template uh, sprite sheet that you can build your own tile set based on top of. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, again, credits to Nocturne for the original script, and um, thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time. See you dudes. One little PS that's worth mentioning as well, just about this system while I still remember, is that be careful um, of the sort of one of the limitations of the um, this specific system. Um, you don't want to do anything like this, where you place some um, tiles like outside of the uh, the um, like the 64 by 64 grid or whatever size your tiles happen to be. It'll work with any size tiles as long as they're square. But um, make sure you don't place them like offset like this, otherwise, unless they're quite far apart from one another, otherwise you're going to run into problems. Like if we try and run this now, yeah, you'll notice that it hasn't really tiled correctly, or because it's like this block here is like going to look above it to see if there's a tile, and it's going to find one here um, because it's just using a collision check to see if there's a tile here. Um, 
So basically you want to make sure that all of these are aligned correctly with a grid, otherwise you will run into problems like this. That is if you're using this specific system. Thanks, um, just wanted to add that on the end there. <laughs> See you guys.